Oh, good morning. You know, it's always amazing when, when you listen to the previous pre presenters and you can feel your own talk being reinforced. And it's not as if we all got together and, re and rehearsed together to say we want to talk about the same things, but I do notice there's quite a lot of common themes here, which is fantastic. So, let's change the gear fully and let's talk about Africa. So, as you can probably tell from my accent, I'm South African, although I live in the UK. Now, in the morning, in Africa, if you're antelope, you wake up and you know you need to run. Because if you're not running, that lion will catch you. If you're a lion, you know you have to run because you have to catch antelope. Because if you don't catch antelope, you won't eat. And that's not very nice, not to have breakfast in the morning. So, basically, in Africa, you wake up and you start running. You know, that, that's what you do. Now, actually, <laughs> In cybersecurity, you notice I ran up the stairs, you know, it's just my post morning run, run. So, in cybersecurity, that's also a very common theme. People seem to think that you don't have to be the best at defending yourself, you just have to be better than, than the other antelope. That's comforting because it makes you think that if we make a lot of effort and we implement a lot of tools, we won't be compromised because we just need to outrun the other people that are lazy. But actually, that's not really worked out for us, <laughs> you know, because I think lines still eat. People still get hacked, you know, you, you see all the headlines. So clearly something is not working. So maybe just try, trying to understand why these lines still catch us. A lot of theories. The first theory is we, we need better technology need best to breed, just need some more stuff. You know, if you implement all these things, bad stuff will stop happening. Next theory is we need smarter people. Those tools are good, but our people are not so clever. You know, we heard about our users and the people implementing it. They just need to be smarter. If they have smarter people, that, those bad things won't happen. Next thing is, oh, no, 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 governments need to regulate. You need GDPR, you need some European privacy directives. You know, we need all these different things, because with regulation, things will become better. Then, oh, we need to talk together, we need to talk. We need to come together and talk about the threats, about the threat actors, what do we learn, what don't we learn. The last theory is not so popular, which is we suck. We're just not getting this right. But actually, I think we maybe need to think about better analogies in terms of how to think about cybersecurity. And for me, a better analogy is the bull run in Pampelona, in Sierra. Well, I'm not pronouncing that properly, if you're Spanish, my well, apologies. So the bull run is basically 925 meters of panic. You know, you've got runners in the same place, you've got the bulls, there's six bulls that will fight in the bull ring tonight, there's six steers that show the bulls which way to run, there's three steers at the back just to make sure everything moves. And on average, you run, I think the average speed is 25 kilometers per hour. That's very, very quick. You know, I can't run that quickly. So now, of course, here the bulls are the threat actors and the runners are our customers. Are, it's basically us trying to not get run over by a bull. So, of course, in this bull run, you get different kinds of runners, you get different kinds of bulls. So, let's look at the bulls first. Or the runners, actually. So, the very first one is the methodical and conventional. You know, you can see this guy running here, you know, in black. You know, he's, he's checking out, he's doing it all by the rules. The next one is a fast and professional. That's a guy right in front here. You know, he's, he's outrunning everybody else. He's going to outrun all these other runners. Then, of course, you have the cunning and strategic. That's a guy looking over there saying, OK, what's going on? Let me just orientate myself according to this. Then you have the naive and denying. This is a guy that says, nah, who's going to try to hack me? You know, none of those bulls will try to run me over. And of course, you have a panic and disorganized. That's a guy that's trying to climb out of the thing to realize, hang on, something bad's happened. I need to just avoid the situation. And of course, you have a slow and lazy. That's a person right at the back there looking, yeah, OK, so don't have to worry about this. Of course, at the same time, you have different kinds of bulls. Now, if there's anybody from Africa in the audience, I know that's not a bull, that's a buffalo, but just allow me. You know. So you get different kinds of bulls, too. You have the young, enthusiastic bull, you, know, you have the lucky bull, you, know, you just stumbled across a vulnerability and a tool on YouTube, like the guy that did Talk Talk. Optimistic bull, just happens to maybe come across a store of data on in the cloud storage area, you have the gang of bulls collaborating, you know, maybe the extortion way people, they're collaborating to do this. You have a professional running bull, this is the bull that actually, whose job it is to, to run over these pesky runners. And then lastly, you have a state-sponsored super bull. 
Now, this bull has been able to bench press his own weight in bull since he was about two, you know. He's strong, he's determined. You know, if you're up against this professional state-sponsored Super Bowl, that's it. You've had your toast, you know. And uh, we heard about this morning talking about instant response and so forth. You know, if, as a poor runner, you come up against this, you know, you just need to limit your damage. You need to know bad stuff will happen. So let's just talk about how we think about this interaction and intersection between the different kinds of companies, our customers with different approaches, and the different kinds of bulls, the different threat actors, you know, trying to get us. So the one thing to say is this. As you can see, this poor person is not going to have a good day, you know, after that bull is about to get to him. Is that you can outrun some of the bulls some of the time, but you can definitely not outrun all of the bulls all of the time. If you are up against a state-sponsored Super Bowl, even if you're very organized, very determined, you'll have an issue. So you have to kind of plan for these things and try to limit the damage for it. You know, so, so this assumption in security, which I think we often do as security practitioners, that, that we'll be secure all the time. And we, we tell our boards and our customers very often, if you spend this money, you'll be secure. That's actually wrong. I think we need to change the narrative to introduce this notion that, you know what, you can't get it right all the time. You just need to try to understand what happens when you don't get it right. So, so let's take a step up. I've now taken the drone. I've taken a step up from all this panic and disorganization at the bottom, trying to understand what to learn from it. And I'm going to group threats into three broad categories. Geopolitical, which we'll hear a lot about later on, which I look forward to immensely. And I'm going to talk about structural uh, factors. And last, the evolution of technology. So, so geopolitical factors are really about governments trying to use cyber to project power. So governments develop cyber tools, cyber capabilities, and very often these tools and capabilities have an impact on the civilian life. Now, we saw it for the Americans developing tools, Eternal Blue and Double Pulsar. But more recently, we've seen it quite a lot with North Korea using hacking and cybersecurity techniques to, to gain money for the nuclear program. So this is really about people with virtual unlimited budget developing tools and technologies. And, you know, the reality is, is there's not much you can do about this, but we need to be aware of it. And, uh, and these are the super bulls, you know, can bench press their own weight and bull. Next is structural factors. Now, these are the bigger picture things, which I think sometimes we don't focus on enough. But these are the big picture things that change the overall landscape. So one of the big things here is that the emergence of cryptocurrencies. And effectively, what it did for, for cyber is it allowed those threat actors, those bulls, to monetize their craft through extortion, through lots of other areas. Another area is cyber, cyber security insurance, which on the whole seems a good idea, and it is a good idea, except it now guarantees the threat actor some money if they manage to compromise somebody. Which again, coming back to incident response and incident readiness, which is why insurance companies will actually reduce premiums if you have a proper program in place. Why? Because they know if that's in place, you, they limit the damage and you, you reduce the cost that they have to, to pay out. But again, that's a big structural factor which I think is driving behavior and is bringing criminality into the space because they know that they can anonymously get the money and that there's a cyber insurance company behind it that, that, that will pay out. And then lastly is evolution of technology. Now, we heard about it earlier on. This is all about change, change, and change. You know, this is about us changing the way that we consume IT. It's about the changing the way that we actually secure IT and how we think about IT. And uh, this, this is one of the areas where I think the threat is perhaps the the broadest because this is a completely different paradigm. We heard earlier about C, you know, uh, sec DevOps where you have a development pipeline and you have to bake security into the whole pipeline and you have to think in a completely different paradigm. And the paradigm where the individual assets out there and the individual users out there have to secure themselves in a way. This is all about SASE, zero trust and, and so forth. So, so the question is, if I think about all these three different factors and how they come together, the convergence of these three factors, geopolitical, structural, and um, the evolution of technology, how do I, through these different things, these are the threats that emerge that actually affect our customers. You know, these are, and the question is, how do I navigate across these three different categories? The first thing to know is that I certainly can't predict the future. You know, I don't have a crystal ball, or certainly not one that works. So it's very difficult to predict what will 
what the future will hold. What I can do, however, I could look at the, the past, because certainly in cybersecurity, you know, the threats that get used on our customers haven't really changed in the last 20 years. You know, there's some fundamental legacy threats. So if I think about threats like we talked about in the previous presentation, Active Directory, you know, <laughs> passwords, you know, the fundamental weak points of the internet, vulnerability management, you know, um, customers not understanding the attack surface, not understanding the different servers and services they've got on the internet. Those things haven't changed for the last 20 years. So really, I guess, in terms of trying to understand, uh, you know, legacy, I can look at the past. In terms of trying to, to, to understand the future, I just have to, to know about the big bigger picture structural factors that are affecting our industry. But what is also true, however, is this, is that there's some fundamental truths that are, that are emerging, which is that, that everybody's a target. Managed service providers, which I know there's a lot in the room here, we are a prime target because you know, the threat actors know that if they compromise one of us, they, they effectively get to a lot of customers and a lot of, lot of data. I think that ransomware or extortionware is definitely here to stay because of those big structural factors, the fact that it pays now to, to do this. And then, of course, there, there's some <laughs> new threats emerging through uh, machine learning and weaponization of, of, of machine learning and, and artificial intelligence, which I think will, will be the thing. So the question for us is, how do we control and how do we do something about this? So the first thing is, from a geopolitical point of view, there's not really much we can do about that. We need to understand it, observe it, and, and this is where threat intelligence becomes important. You know, we heard in, in previous presentations about just being aware of it, understanding how threat the, the, the state-sponsored Super Bowls play. What do they do? You know, what are the threats we should worry about? And this is one area where observing it and orienting, orienting around it is really, really beneficial. So the next thing is around structural factors. Again, it's important to understand the structural factors, to understand the impact on us and on our customers. So to, to understand how um, cyber insurance is affecting it, what's going on with extortion where, how's regulation affecting our industry. And again, it helps here to partner with somebody that's got a global view that can help us to advise our customers on these different structural factors. And then lastly, about um, the evolution of technology, this is all about controlling the narrative. You know, we, we heard about the cloud, and, and certainly from our perspective, most of the cloud security conversations we have aren't with the security people. They're with the line of business. They're with the developers. They're with the people that are actually spinning up these applications. And it's really about being in control of this and providing a wide spectrum of solutions which isn't just focused about security, but also focused on enablement and actually does understand the cloud native paradigm. So, so if I think about the things we control and the things we don't control, it's actually not a very nice picture in a sense, because we can control technology factors, our tax surface, we can control the cloud we can, uh, and, and the migration to it, or have some control over it. But the bits that we don't really control, the structural factors, geopolitical, it's kind of a bit asymmetric. And, and you know, this asymmetry maybe explains why there's so many headlines, you know? But the fact is, we don't get it right all the time. Again, I'm going back to this notion that I think we need to change our thinking, and we need to change our customers' thinking about the fact that we can get it right 100% of the time. We can't, we won't. You know, if that was true, in the physical world, there'll be no crime. You know, we've been trying to prevent crime for ever since humans were evolving. So why do we think we'll be different in the cybersecurity space? So it's, it's important to, to think about these things. So how do we then translate that into to real things? First of all, take a holistic approach, and this is where the reinforcement bit comes in. Assume they will be breach. Don't think our customers are never an issue. What we do need to talk about is how do we limit the damage? Going back to physical analogy again, we know there will be theft. So I have insurance to mitigate the loss against that. You know, I want to, to reduce the impact for me. Um, next thing is, I think in terms of, it's really important to bake security into, into your um, digital transformation initiatives. And, and I'm excited about the WIF Secure announcements about cloud security posture management, about attack surface management. These are all ways that you can actually bake this into your um, 
digital transformation um, initiatives. And th the thing that I often talk to our customers about is that is this whole notion of cloud security versus security in the cloud. People often focus on cloud security, say the cloud is secure, you know, Microsoft, Google, uh, Amazon do, do a lot of jobs, they've got good stuff to secure it, but not, don't think about security of the applications inside the cloud in a new paradigm with containers and microservices and so forth. So I think it's, it's important to also help customers understand that distinction. Now, the reality is, although this world is stacked against me, time is out, I've got two more points to make and then we're done. Okay. Um, even though state sponsored Super Bowls still use legacy techniques, common vulnerabilities, you know, spear phishing, supply chain attacks, you know, those, those aren't different things. Okay? So, and it's important to kind of simulate these attackers, as we heard earlier. And then lastly, it's really, really important to have a holistic approach, to go back to the NIST framework, assume the worst will happen, you know, understand your risk, detect them, have the ability to protect against them, respond to the attacks, and then recover from them. So on that note, Thanks very much, and thanks for your kind attention.